I've watched you. Sometimes our people disagree with you, but mm. I mean, I understand some of your approach. I mean, mm. sometimes we take a hard bite. Mm. It helps us as police. Nowadays, when I listen to you, I even panic. Why? Maybe, hey, why do you panic? The way, the way you, uh, uh, Papa, you know Papa. <laughs> <laughs> Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Hasbun Allah wa Neem al Wakil. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And here though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. It's Tuesday. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. If you check your calendar, it's 11 days to the big election on December 7, 2024. And a lot of you are making preparations. A lot of you continue to ask questions on the media landscape. A lot of you are listening to the conversations. A lot of you are reading portions of the manifesto or watching the adverts or listening to the arguments and the, uh, the positions being advanced on radio and TV online, and the front pages of the newspapers, etc. Your vote is your power. And that decision is yours. I will share with you something that Dr. Kwame Nkrumah Ghana's first president said. But first, let me say thank you to Sonar Fashions in Tamale for my outfit. And you can always call him on 0246 590126. 0246 590126 is in Kuko in Tamale, but they can deliver across the world if you want something delivered to you. Also, let me say a very big, big, big congratulations to Bleo B. Robert Tete Coleman, the king of all the astroturfs, the good ones, not the bad ones that you find in the country. The latest addition is the astroturf in Techiman and also the one at Hohoi. Very beautiful indeed. And to specially thank him for giving us one of the astroturfs, the one at the Kotobabi area, for us to use for uh, a production, the Onye FM Sakoranya and Seni, for free of charge. So, Robert Tete Koman. And he has a very favorite uh, saying that, Manyama fe etamo in lefemo. So, new additions in Hohoi and also in Techiman. Congrats to you, Robert Tete Koman. Yesterday, I had the opportunity to, while I was in town trying to do my own um, work, to understand what's happening on the ground and to bring you details of Ajana 1, Ajana 2. I met a single mother who had two children. And this single mother is not because she does not want to continue her marriage, it's because, unfortunately, the husband died. And it's a young single mother. But let's say about 39, 40 ish. And she approached me and says, She spoke in tree. She said, Bra Johnny, in Tinny Abai ye a ye. Let me say, Oh, sister, Abai na ye den. Or see, Abai na see young cot electricity one month and fun to her. Now me and me, Gina, who shall me with Sika. I said, Oh, sister, me a winning. Or see, mean to me, me a mini. Because Sika de bini ho. Nya ye be di kra aye den am aye den am me. Inti min to min to. Makoto seventy Ghana me dia to ho. Every week ye use fifty Ghana. Omo pa omo dum light no. Sa ba to bre ne beso. Ye nso ye be dum omo light. This was what the single mother said. To which she said that look, bra Johnny, what the government is doing is it good? I said what is the government doing? She said well. The government has asked us to go and buy one month worth of electricity because they are going to do some work. And then she said she doesn't have the money. She cannot afford it. So okay. So what would you do? She said, well, I have bought 70 Ghana cities. My weekly consumption is 50 Ghana cities. So I will buy the 50 Ghana cities and keep. If they like, they should put off my light. When the election day comes, I will put off their light. So a word to a wise is enough. Number two, this situation that has been visited upon us as citizens of the Republic of Ghana, this one is me speaking. I hope that the electricity company of Ghana is also considering the possibility of people connecting uh, to their power illegally. 
And I don't hope they run to, they run to the, the, the PURC um, very, very soon to go and tell them that, oh, people have stolen power, so they would have to increase tariffs because it has cost them uh, and the uh, cost of production has gone high. I, don't, I hope not. Because we were sitting there somewhere when you came and you said you want to introduce new meters. And within a very short period, I can tell you on authority, somebody says the meter has been changed four times. Four different meters at the same time, within a, sh a very short period. Somebody says this is procurement, you know, soup. Somebody says it is last minute, uh, what do you call, campaign cash. Somebody says it is, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, um, uh, how, how did the person even put it? Oh, I forgot to remember, remember I'll tell you. So ECG, the possibility of people connecting illegally, I'm sure that you are paying attention to it. Good morning to you. Now, another issue that I have seen a lot of emotions being pushed into it. Samuel Kujatua Blackwa told us about expired rights in the schools. And so far, instead of answering the questions, you find persons in government or those associated to government or with government rather throwing tantrums and asking not people not to politicize it and getting angry and sometimes very emotional and trying to, uh, you know, dissuade people's minds from the conversation. Yesterday, I had uh, my good friend, Chrissy Kwating. At some point, he got up and walked out of the studio because I had asked a simple question that where the rice was bagged, was it licensed? Simple question. It was a very simple question. I asked that question. Now, the conversation is this. Whether you like it or not, we will ask the questions because the monies that were used to procure the rice is not your pocket money. The children who are in the school, are, they don't include your children because we know your children are not in the schools where you feed the children expired rice. We know. We know that your children are either outside or are attending international schools where this nonsense of feeding people's children with expired rice will not be tolerated. So whether you like it or not, whether you get angry or not, whether you get emotional or not, we will ask you the questions and you must answer the questions because you promised us accountability and the day of accountability has come, you must come and ask the questions. It's not a fight. It's not a, a, an insult parade. It's a matter of answering the questions. And you know what my grandmother says? My grandmother says that there's an old English saying that where there's smoke, there's fire. So now, now that we're asking the questions that we're not getting all the answers that we need, the question now arises. Today we know about expired rice that has been fed to the children. What other things could have been fed to the children that was expired? Today we know about rice. Ketsi Samuelokutia to a black one that had expired, which was fed to our children. And we are now confused about best before expired, blah, 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 blah. I want to see how the FDA conducts itself in future. If somebody goes to import something, there's a best before and there's expired. I want to see how the FDA goes about it, whether they will go and collect the things and destroy them. I want to see how they will con conduct themselves in, in the coming days. But the question arises, if we are not being now asked, uh, being answered, and we are asking the questions, what else could have been fed to our children which probably may have expired? Could it be flour? Could it be sugar? What else? And I'm asking this question because I have two words, not my own children, in the secondary schools as we speak. So what they eat away from home is my business. After school, they will come and live with me. Whatever complications they have after school is my business. I will not come to government begging and asking government to, to help me. Now, this morning I was thinking about, there's an organized labor uh, tape there. You find organized labor sitting on the uh, front. I want you to play that for me, but before that, good morning to the leadership of organized labor in this country. Good morning to the leadership of organized labor in this country. We were talking about Galamse and the effects of Galamse. We are still drinking the chemicals, mercury, lead, cyanide, um, Ghana water will add its uh, chlorine, alum, etc. We are still drinking it. Galamse is still ongoing. 
And I told you that a few jokers will come and tell you that we are sending people to go and sack the Galamseas. It's a night day word. I told you about it. I stood here and told you about it. And it has happened, just as I predicted, because I know my country so well. You went to the president. You became the last bastion of hope for the people of the Republic of Ghana. Everybody thought organized labor's threat to go on a demonstration was what was going to get government to take a decisive decision on stopping illegal mining Galamse, where prominent people in this government had been mentioned. Then organized labor gave an ultimatum. Then they, they, they revised the ultimatum. They transposed it forward. And then they finally caved in after the president had met them and asked for extra time. Now, organized labor. I've told you that if you call yourselves organized labor and you collect the dues of your members and they hope that when they have issues, you fix the issues for them. And when they have issues, they don't come to you and they come to Johnny Hughes. Then you have failed as, a, as leaders. And on this occasion, organized labor, you have not only failed your members, you have not only failed yourselves, you have failed the entire country because you decided to cave in when the president made an emotional appeal to you. Now, guess what? After the president asked for more time to fight Galamsey, which is an emergency, which has to be dealt with, the president has seen being to COP in Azerbaijan, COP 29. He went there to go and brag to them and tell them that we have planted 50 million trees in this country and that we have so far recovered over 700 hectares of land, blah, blah, blah. He went there to tell them that if you had been on strike and he had taken those drastic measures, he wouldn't have gone there to tell them because the world would have known and the world would have heard. But because you caved in, he went there and he had the temerity to tell the world that we had planted 50 million trees. Where are the 50 million trees? He said we had recovered over 700 hectares of land. I mean, where are they? Which, give us the data. Let's see them. Show us the areas. Because Adam uh, Srems, uh, what do you call it, his videos, the drone shots, Ibrahim Abubakar, all our correspondents across the country in those mining areas, they tell a different story. Since you caved in, the president has gone to COP, has gone to his room and he has come back. When he came back, he didn't come to meet you even after asking you for time. It's been more than one month since he asked you to give him extra time. He's now busily campaigning. He has ignored you. You see how he has made you look powerless and weak before your own people and before all Ghanaians, organized labor. The president has disorganized you just by asking you to give, you, give him extra time to do what he is mandated to do. And Ghanaians were hoping on you, organized labor. It's not about the title, though. It's not about granting interviews. It's not about writing press statements. It's not about uh, uh, calling the shots and playing big boys. No, 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 no. It's, it's not about the people paying dues and you being paid from the dues. No, no, no. Organized labor goes beyond that. And I'm sure you know. I'm not the one now going to teach organized labor how to do its work. But on this occasion, and in the matter of Galamse, organized labor, I want to respectfully submit to you that you have failed yourselves, you have failed your membership, and you have failed Ghana. And I'm telling you that the president, since he asked you for extra time, has been to COP. He's going to misrepresent the facts at COP. He has come back. He has ignored you. He's busily campaigning and endorsing that. We vote for Dr. Wami. I'm launching this. I'm commissioning that, which is good. He's doing his work. He's politicking, that's fine. But what is important to us, all of us, while we continue to drink the galamse water, etc., he has asked for extra time. I mean, the man is over 80. Touch wood, if he dies tomorrow, he spent his life. What about the six-year-old? What about the little girl that Ibrahim Mahama paid for his, what do you call, her, 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 her medical bills to be taken outside? What about the children being born with deformities? What about those developing liver and kidney and, and all those complications? So organized labor, you see, you had a golden opportunity. You failed everybody. And you must bow down your heads in shame this morning, organized labor. If you're a union leader anywhere in, the, in, in this country, bow down your head in shame. A man who asked you for extra time has traveled, come back, 
He has gone, he's crisscrossing the country, he's campaigning, he has ignored you. He's not even minding you, he has not even called you back to the table. After one month, that's why I asked the question the other time, how much time did the president need when he asked you for time? Did you ask the president how much time he needed? Did you ask him? You did not ask him. The soldiers that I told you that the soldiers that were being told will be sent onto the water is just for public show, as they say in the service. It's eye service. So now organize it. You see your face. You see what has become of us. Can't see your, your caving in. Ah, I leave it here. Play the video for me. Play. Let's remind Ghanaians. President Akufuado met the leadership of organized labor to discuss their impending strike. The meeting was held behind closed doors. Sources indicate President Akufuado pleaded with organized labor to suspend its strike. He also requested for more time to attend to the concerns of organized labor. Labor has petitioned the president to consider a total ban of small scale and galamse mining activities. The source indicated that the appeal by the president was not convincing to suspend their strike. Labor has intended to convince an emergency meeting tomorrow, Friday, the 4th of October 2024, on the appeal by the president. So this was it. Daniel Opoku, a senior labor correspondent, he put it out there. But let's move away from it while organized labor thinks about the shame that they have visited upon themselves. And while we all suffer, let organized labor think about it. Let's talk about the National Cathedral. Please put the picture of the National Cathedral up there. What you see is not or was not original. No, I want the original picture, the dream of the National Cathedral. The dream, what was envisaged. The blueprint. The Akufuado Initiative and Dream. You know, once upon a time, we had a politician in this country called Danlati. People called him Mr. Domestication. It was Danlati who was on radio one time, and they asked him why he wants to be president, and he says he heard a voice from God saying, Latte, Latte Okashi, Teshi Akegana Yae. The president of the republic, Nanado Danko Akufuado, he said that if God is merciful and gracious enough to give him a second term, four more to do more, which will end in 2025, 7 January, 6 January in fact, he will build God a cathedral. This was the president's personal pledge to God. It was not our national problem. How that personal pledge of President Akufuado who is now president, has become a national problem. It's a big problem that you must be honest about. This is supposed to be a Kufuado Cathedral, not a national cathedral. So who renamed it? Who re-Christianed it? Who stole the idea from President Kufuado without asking him? And I'll demonstrate to you in a bit. Let's listen to the president. Listen to him. I'm a Christian in politics who's unashamed of asserting my Christian faith as part of my political calling. The best in the morning. It is this faith and this belief in God's power to transform difficult situations into beacons of hope that has animated my vision for me moving Ghana to a situation beyond aid and putting the country onto the road of self-reliance, sustained progress and prosperity. Our march to a brighter future is underpinned by our firm attachment to a governance system that respects individual human rights and individual liberties, the rule of law, and the principles of democratic accountability. This faith is also the motivation for one of the major projects which I have described as a priority of priorities that we are undertaking in the country. This is the construction of the National Cathedral of Ghana, which first brought us to this venue three years ago in February 2019. The National Cathedral addresses a missing link in our nation's architecture the best in the by providing a formal space for the religious activities of the state. Designed by the iconic global Ghanaian architect, David Ajay, 
who designed the National Museum of African American History and Culture here in Washington, D.C. The National Cathedral provides an interdenominational space for worship and will serve to insert God at the center of our nation building efforts. We've integrated the Bible Museum and Biblical Garden as part of the project. Dub the, biblical, the Bible Museum of Africa and Biblical Gardens of Africa, they extend the National Cathedral Project, which will transform Ghana, over 70% of whose population are self-proclaimed Christians, into a major center of Christianity in Africa. That was President Ekufuado. You heard him. He said the National Cathedral is his priority of all the priorities. Yesterday I watched in admiration as the president, you know, commissioned four hospitals. And we're told it's 71 million euros. And then I held my head and asked, so, so far how much have we spent on the National Cathedral? And could that have built at least the La General Hospital? At least the La General Hospital. At least the La General Hospital or the Doma uh, Trauma and Accident Center, at least could not have done that. The National Cathedral. Now, there's a, a, a Shraj document. Shraj has been looking into it. They've been making some findings. They have referred the matter to the Office of the Special Prosecutor. And social media has been awash with conversations about, okay, what exactly is Shraj talking about? Now, summary of key findings. The National Cathedral of Ghana is a public property held in trust for the Republic of Ghana by the Ghana Museums and Monuments Board. The Board of Trustees or Directors of the National Cathedral of Ghana are public officers. Government at the inception of the National Cathedral Project made contradictory statements regarding the source of funding for the construction of the cathedral. They told us that no public funds will be used. It turns out the government lied in the name of God. The Supreme Court did not rely on the Attorney General's assertion that the, no public funds would be used for the National Cathedral Project in arriving at its decision in the case of uh, James Kabila Bonfet, the junior, that's Dr. Kabila, versus uh, Attorney General 2019 GHA SC2. The contract awarded to Ribadi Company Limited for the construction of the National Cathedral was in a sum of $312 million, $394,049.53. Let's go to the next page. Now, this is contained in a report that came out of, uh, for, from Trad yesterday. The contract was awarded by the Board of Trustees to the contractor without recourse to the current uh, approval by the Central Tender Review Committee, a key requirement of the Procurement Act having regard to the contract sum. The National Cathedral of Ghana did not strictly comply with the rules of public procurement provided for under Act 663 as amended by Act 914, which uh, when it purported to select and award the contract for the construction of the National Cathedral to Ribadi Limited. The contract awarded Ribadi Company Limited for the construction of the National Cathedral is illegal and void. Ah, Benicio. Listen, is illegal and void. Ah, Benicio. Is illegal and void. Ah, Benicio. The procurement breaches that occasion the award of the contract to Ribadi Company Limited raise reasonable suspicion of corruption and corruption related offenses. That's where the Office of the Special Prosecutor coming. Kisir Jabin Samidako, good morning to you. The Faith uh, Respondent Company is a registered company with the sole objective of talent and skills development training. The fourth respondent, Victor Kusibwatin, a.k.a. Kwabena uh, Dujemfi, does not hold two different passports and bearing one of his two names with different dates of birth on each document. There is no Victor Kusibwatin in the passport database. The fourth respondent has rather been issued four ordinary passports, three of which have expired, and one diplomatic passport under his name, Kwabina Edu Jemfi, with the same date of birth. The fourth rep respondent, as board director of the National Cathedral and the fifth respondent company, did not put himself in a position where his personal interest conflicted or was likely to conflict with the performance of the functions of his office, as no transaction for the provision of services existed between the National Cathedral and the fifth respondent company. 
the 2.6 million Ghana cities paid by the National Cathedral of Ghana um, to the fifth respondent was a refund of an interest-free short-term loan granted to the National Cathedral by the fifth respondent company at the time when it needed funds urgently to pay its contract. 2.6 million. People get money for this country six dues. What are we doing here? Uh, it's a question. Uh, people have 2.6 million. Okay, so that's about it. Let's, let's see the other document. There's another document. I'll play another video for you. Then we'll wrap up. Another quick document. This is important. Now, 92 of the acts that I quoted says that any person who contravenes any provisions of this act commits an offense, and where no penalty has been provided for the offense, the person is liable on summary conviction to a fine not exceeding 10, a 1,000 penalty units or a term of imprisonment not exceeding five years or to both. Emphasis added. On the 23rd of July 2024, this commission, in its ruling on the preliminary objection to uh, its jurisdiction brought by the third and seven respondents, held that corruption could occur through viol violations of procurement rules. Although the commission has not found any elements of corruption in this case, the extent of the breaches raises reasonable suspicion of corruption. Consequently, the commission is making a referral of this case to the office of the special prosecutor or the attorney general for further investigations and prosecution of the board of trustees members of the national cathedral if necessary the commission notes in particular that under section 3a of the office of the special prosecutor act 2017 act 959 the office is mandated to a investigate and prosecute cases of alleged or suspected corruption and corruption related offenses under the public procurement act 2003 act 663 this call for investigations and subsequent prosecution if necessary and that's where the public have been asking questions what do you mean that subsequent if necessary is directed at the members of the board of trustees of the national cathedral who were members of uh, as of 2021 dr paul opoku mensa executive director of the national cathedral of ghana when the contract for the construction was awarded to ribadi company limited the trustees include apostle professor opoku nina chairman of the church of pentecost uh, who was chairperson at bishop charles gabriel palmer Bacco, metropolitan catholic at bishop cape coast vice chairman most reverend bishop um uh, Justice of Fair, Krofi Anglican Archbishop Emeritus, a member, right, Reverend Professor Emmanuel Mate, Inyansa former moderator of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. Let's see the next one quickly, please. B B yeah. Most Reverend T.A. Uh, T.K. Awatri Pratt, presiding Bishop of the Methodist Church member, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, uh, presiding Archbishop and General Overseer of the Action Chapel International member, Reverend Dr. Joyce, I.E. Executive Director, Salt and Light Ministries, the member, yeah. Bishop Doug Hayward Mill, presiding bishop lighthouse group a uh, church member reverend istudanaba founder and president of istudanaba ministries uh, reverend kusi boating founder of the power chapel uh, founder of the power chapel worldwide member and secretary reverend dr frimpon manson general superintendent assemblies of god who is also a member let's see what the national cathedral looks like now presently then i'll play that video for you wrap up this is what the national cathedral looks like of all the monies that we have spent, over 303 million uh, something something dollars, this is what the National Cathedral today, this is what it looks like. In fact, the last time some people went on a demonstration, they went there to swim. And I'm saying that yesterday I watched in awe. I watched in awe, right? In very good awe, as the president adored four hospitals. What has been spent in this magnificent hole could have given us some more, some more some more could have given us a lot more there's a video of archbishop nicholas duncan williams he spoke passionately about how we needed to support the national cathedral how we needed to do the right thing and all of that and how the future will be the judge of what they were going to do and i, I watched the video and i was I, I had goosebumps all over me and i asked myself Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams is one of, in fact, the men of God listed there. I mean, a large, a, a big majority of them are people I've admired since my childhood. I still make time to listen to that. I still make time to listen to uh, Ma Madame Joyce Ayo on Sundays, her hymn sessions. I make time to listen to them. But what is wrong is wrong. The fact that the contract was given, because the men of God and women of God teach us that we must do right. 
and I'm an Anglican, there's a hymn 739, oh, it is hard to work for God. A portion of the hymn says that, uh, for right is right as God is God, and right the day must win. To doubt will be in royalty, to, to falter away, to sin. I remember that hymn. How is it that the men of God got it wrong? Some with PhDs got it wrong. And there's a song, stealing, 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 oh, stealing, stealing in the name of the Lord. How did we get it wrong? There's an Nkrumah code. Put it up for me. Then we'll wrap up with that. We can't find the video. How did they get it wrong? Because we sit in front of them and they teach us, they preach the sermons to us and they tell us to do what is right. Per what Shraj has written, I don't know what the OSP will write, but it is obvious that something went wrong. People did wrong. This was Dr. Kwame Nkrumah on the 30th of June, 1962, on the eve of our Second Republic celebration. And I want you to listen to it and relate it to all the things I've said. And on that occasion, we did not have a celebration because he said the country was broke. This was at the time we were putting up the Temamoto way. This was at the time we were developing Tema itself. Put, put that thing up. Let's read it. Shadrach, give me a minute. Let's read this. It says, all these developments. He's talking about Temamoto way. He's talking about Temaport. He's talking about the development of Tema, which are a testament to his leadership. All these developments, and they were not funded with loans. All these developments have been provided for entirely from our own resources. The national progress and prosperity of Ghana is the concern of every citizen. We must, each of us, play our part to make a success of our national program. Let us be determined here and now that we shall, by our own exertions, keep Ghana on the road to prosperity and strength, Ghana beyond aid. The days are gone, gone forever when we were prevented from playing any role in the affairs of the government, and when we thought, therefore, that we had no responsibility for the welfare of the country. We now have a responsibility, and your responsibility is to pick up your card and vote. And we owe it to the posterity, to posterity to discharge it faithfully and well. I wish you all a happy Republic Day. Good morning. He said good night, but I'm saying good morning to you. Please call me, 055-924-2717 and 055-691-0154. 055-924-2717 and 055-691-0154. Please call me after this break. See you shortly.